dolls welcome back I am looking kind of crazy I know I finally filmed a video that I was dying and dying you guys have no idea to film for a very long time with a video where I show makeup mistakes or makeup do's and don'ts I'm not quite sure what I'm going to name it as of yet but I just wanted to share a few tips and tricks um, of little makeup things that I do um, and that I've learned throughout the years that I think make a huge difference on your makeup you can see this is the don't side uh, or the mistakes and this side is the yes go ahead and do it and uh, the not so many mistakes I guess so I hope that you guys enjoy this video if you are excited to see the differences between the two sides and how I did it and my little tricks then just keep on watching let's go bye okay so let's go ahead and get started I am so tired today I'm dying and my bad boys are worse than ever so excuse moi this is going to be the good side and this is going to be the bad side and I'm gonna start off by priming the good side to me primer is super important I used to never believe in primer but now I do it really keeps my foundation longer it makes it just apply well depending on the primer and it applies just a lot smoother so to me again primer is a must I'm just applying it in a little tapping motion. Push it into the skin to make sure that it's nice and smooth. It's gonna be so difficult for me to do it. <laughs> like one thing in one side and then the opposite and the other. So before foundation, I typically apply a corrector for my under eyes. I am going to be using the corrector in the tone Peach by Bobbi Brown, which is very similar to my skin tone. And um, the reason why I wanted to point this out is because it is not super orange yet it's going to correct my under eyes and it's going to cancel out the darkness under my eyes and a lot of people think that you need an orange corrector and you don't necessarily need the corrector to be super orange if you apply it super super orange all it's doing is like you have another layer that you have to correct so I'm going to show you that with just a peach light very peach corrector I'm going to go ahead and cover my under eyes and we're not going to have to go too too orange one more thing that you must know is that the corrector you only want to apply it on the area that's actually dark like you don't have to go down here you don't have to go in a triangle you just want to correct the darkness the blueness the redness whatever you have underneath your eyes going on that's what you're looking to correct so for this eye i'm going to apply the orange pretty much everywhere like you're not supposed to now we're gonna go ahead and try to blend that in but i can tell you girl we apply way too much all right, so now it's time for foundation. I'm gonna be using a foundation that matches my neck and not necessarily my face because my face is way lighter than my body. That, of course, depends whether or not you have the same problem. But just make sure that you match your foundation as best as possible and that we also blend it in all over the face, the outer corners, your ears. Like, you wanna make sure, like, if, especially if it doesn't match 100%, you want to go over your hairline and everything. I didn't apply too, too much foundation because I don't believe you have to apply so much foundation to cover up. Like I truly believe in just using concealer for spot concealing. So that way um, you don't look too cakey, but some people prefer that. But for this video, we're gonna keep it light. Then I'm gonna bring it to my ear. I like to bring it to my hairline just to make sure that I don't have any demarcation there and then I like to drag it to my neck even though this is a pretty good match for me um, I like to bring it down to my neck and make sure that it's really nice and blended we all had that I had it in the past where I have my foundation on my makeup and I think I'm like to shit <laughs> and then I see myself in a mirror and I have like the line here of foundation so that's not gonna happen anymore to me because now I'm extra careful and I make sure that I blend blend and blend until my fingers hurt now for the back side we're gonna go in with a foundation that is lighter than my skin tone and it's also another perfect undertone undertone is so important my undertone is super yellow so whenever I wear like a pinky foundation it looks terrible so that's what we're gonna do today and hopefully you guys are able to pick it up on the camera i'm gonna apply a foundation that's a little bit lighter than my complexion right now but mostly the undertone is just completely off so hopefully you guys can pick it up on the camera and you're also gonna see how difficult 
it is to cover that orange now. Like now it's going all over my face and I'm tapping. I am tapping, I'm not dragging, so I'm not cheating. So we're covering two things at once. Don't use the wrong undertone. And two, when you apply too much orange corrector, this is what can happen. And all of this right now is orange. And this of course is pink. So now we're gonna go back to the under eye. Now I'm going to go ahead and just finish that correction. And I'm going to highlight and correct at the same time. I'm gonna be using a highlighter or slash concealer that is my skin tone maybe like a little lighter but not too much i typically actually go in with two concealers whenever i'm going full glam it's because i haven't found my perfect shade on the concealer that i'm using at the moment shape tape <laughs> but um you don't really need two you just need the perfect shade i typically go for like one to two shades lighter than me so i am just highlighting i don't know if i should highlight my nose i'm gonna highlight it should i highlight it I apply a lot of concealer because I have really bad under eye area, like it's really, really dark, but not everybody has that problem. So if you don't have that problem, you don't need all this concealer. If you only want to highlight, you don't need to use a corrector. All you need is a little bit of concealer and trust me and believe that three dots, it's more than enough if you don't have really bad dark circles like I do. I just have really bad dark circles and I learned to live with them and that this is how I cover them, but you don't have to go through this whole Thing, like you don't need it I know that most of us are doing it on social media but you don't need it unless you like the look of the whole lifting your face and you or you have really bad dark circle I also apply a little bit here on the corners of my nose like on the right on the side of my nose just to give the illusion that I have a slimmer nose but again if you don't have my nose problem, you don't have to do this either. I'm also gonna go ahead and set my concealer with a yellow powder. You can use a translucent powder or anything almost right away because that way we avoid creasing. So the faster you set it, the better. So you have to, you have to, you have to set your under eyes. If you don't set your under eyes, you're probably gonna have tons of creasing. Some people say they don't, but I do. I have to set my under eyes. So now for this eye, we're gonna move on to a super light concealer. A lot of people feel that they have to go all in with the highlighting under the eye, like that you need four or five shades lighter than your skin tone so it can look cute. And I'm just gonna show you guys that that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes we can actually look weird, like especially in pictures. If you have a super under eye highlighting area, it depends. It depends, of course, how you do it. But if you overdo it, anything that is to the extreme can be bad. But again, that's just my opinion. All right, so as you can see, as much as I try and I apply a ton of concealer and I use my Beauty Blender, so I'm not even cheating. The Beauty Blender actually absorbs a lot of product. I still have a lot of the orange that we applied underneath the eyes and it definitely is not looking cute on this side so let's just keep going i'm going to ignore powder underneath my eyes i'm just going to pretend that it doesn't exist and uh, let's see how it's going to turn out all right so now let's move on to the brows for the good side i'm going to be using my anastasia brow gel in soft brown so for the brows i think the most important thing wherever you start you really want to go straight until you get to your arch if you know what i'm saying like don't try to make a little square and follow just the natural shape of your brow. Like if you really want cute brows, that's what you need to do. Like you need to start, where, wherever you start, you're gonna draw straight, draw straight, yes. And uh, then from your arc, you can follow either your natural shape or you can take it to the shape that you like. So I'm just gonna show you how I do it and hopefully, hopefully, oh my God, I can speak today. You guys understand what I'm really trying to say. So what I do is I like to just draw the line straight and I like to flip the brush up sometimes so I can see what I'm doing up until the time that I get to my arc. Like right here, I don't really have hair like in this piece here, but I kept going straight. Just pretend that I had hair there. And then once I do that, then it's easy for me just to do the tail. I really trace my natural tail there. Now I like to just comb down a little bit, take a little bit more of product. And again, we're gonna go straight then here turn down of course we cannot not blend so just turn over to your spoolie or get a little spoolie even a toothbrush anything 
and just start blending and then from there you're gonna see wherever you need more and that's it you want to keep it a little lighter and your strokes are supposed to be like going up like that so you can flip the brush so for this side i'm going to show you two things one i always try to stick to a, a product like the color of the product that you're going to be using should be either the same tone of your brow hairs or if possibly a little bit lighter so that it doesn't look scary or frightening you know so in my case i'm going to be using this benefit pencil that i love but it turned out to be a little too dark for me i make it work i use it all the time but we're going to keep the lines pretty harsh we're not going to blend and i'm going to just follow the natural shape of my brow and i'm going to show you how boxy brows look so this is what you don't want to do so here i'm following the natural shape of my brow so i made a straight line here then i went up because i have no hair there hopefully you can see that and then i start drawing the line one more time i need a mirror I'm not combing any hair anymore just following the natural shape for this side i'm going to take a little bit of concealer and uh, i'm going to try to just shape a little bit the bottom just the smallest amount just in case i have any mistakes with a concealer that's my skin tone or very similar to it maybe a little lighter but not too too much so now for this side just to highlight to follow that trend that we see sometimes we're gonna highlight right above the brow and right below it with a concealer that is like four shades lighter than me i'm gonna move on to the fun part eyeshadow i am a big believer of priming so i'm going to be using a trusty primer this is going to make sure that the eyeshadow blends nicely that it doesn't crack up um and that it lasts all day and then next the first step i'm gonna set it with a powder that is almost the same tone as the primer just to make sure that it stays in place and it's gonna be easier to blend the eyeshadows right over it to me it's super important to use a transitional shade i always tend to go for shadows like this one this is creme Brulee from makeup geek and i like these type of shadows because whenever you're blending always with a little blending brush or big blending brush very loose we're gonna blend in like a circular motion this is going to make sure that when whatever shadows you blend like on the crease later they actually end up in a gradient effect now just to intensify the crease i'm going to take a dark brown eyeshadow i always like to just go in like gradient look from lighter to darker so i'm going in with another one that's uh, obviously darker and in little circular motions i try to hold the brush right here we're going to just build that color into the crease a little bit at a time that always works best to me also applying matte shadows on the crease works best for the lid i am going to be using a shadow that's a little bit shimmery or very shimmery and i always apply any lid color just to pack it with a packer brush or a flat shader brush and this time i am going to hold it a lot closer to the actual grip right here because that's going to give me more precision and i'm going to be able to pack the color more now i always go back in with the previous brush or brush that we use on the crease and i like to just blend in the color without using any more eyeshadow just blending next i'm going to intensify a little bit more and i'm going to be picking up a little bit of the black eyeshadow this is corrupt from makeup geek and just to show you guys that blending black is not hard it's just that you have to be very careful a little bit of product tap off the excess again we're gonna hold the brush very far and you're gonna do little circular motions getting a clean brush again we're gonna blend that in for yeah. this eye i'm actually gonna do a wing liner you don't have to do a wing liner every time it's not necessary but i just want to show you so you can see the difference and what it actually does to your eye for the liner, the most important thing, we all make mistakes, is nobody's perfect. I don't know, I have to hold my breath when I'm doing my liner. That it looks like a little knife, kind of. Like, it starts thick right here, and then it ends really thin. Like, you don't, you don't just want a thin line going one way without any purpose. And then here, that is, again, um, going thicker. And then the closer you get to the inner corners of your eyes, that is thinner there. For the bottom lash line, I'm going in with Creme Brulee first, which is the first eyeshadow that we use. We're just pretty much using all the shadows and the same thing. I'm starting off with the lightest, and then I'm building up the, the darkness. In my opinion, it's also super important to use a light eyeshadow in the inner corners of the eyes because it really opens up your eyes. So I'm applying here Shimmer Shimmer from Makeup Geek. 
and I'm just applying that on the tear duct a little bit. Alright, so for this eye, what we're gonna do first is I'm not gonna prime. I'm gonna go in with a shimmer shadow and um, I'm gonna start that off on the lid and the first thing, the first no-no, it's don't use a dirty brush with an eyeshadow that totally doesn't match. So I'm gonna take this mermaid eyeshadow, which is gorgeous, nothing against blue shadows. I love blue shadows, they're actually one of my favorites and that's why I made so many mistakes with blue shadows in the past when I thought I could do makeup and I really didn't. So I'm just gonna go in with a brush like this. It's a fluffy brush. I typically don't use this on the lid, but for today's purpose, we're gonna use it. I went ahead and applied the blue all over the lid and I also brought it up to the crease because I thought I, would, I, thought I was being cute. That's what I used to do. And uh, just bringing it from inner corner the outer corner and up to the almost the brow bone like that and trust me I hope I hopefully I can find a picture or two that I can show you guys because I totally totally rocked this look I even used this look on my baby shower my son's baby shower and that was only four years ago so yeah that was not that long ago so yeah then I will come in with the same dirty brush and try to smoke out the look with a little bit of black eyeshadow that's what I would do. Same dirty brush, all the way to the black eyeshadow, and then we're gonna go in. So I would literally like sit here for 10 minutes blending one eye, and nothing will happen. And I'll be like, but the YouTubers do it, and they just blend, and they tell you to blend in circular motions, and I'm doing it in and out for a smoky eye. And maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. I'm Dominican. I can, you know, we tend to exaggerate things sometimes. But um, it would look something like this. And then I will go back with a shimmery shadow and highlight this little piece of brow bone that I had right here. The most shimmery shadow that I will have. For this eye, I'm also gonna go in with the same shadow, shimmer shimmer. And again, I'm not a fan of applying shimmery shadows to the brow bone, but um, it's okay. I do it once in a while. But to me personally, the trick is after I apply it, I go back in with a blending brush and I make sure that that line doesn't look so harsh. But now for this eye, I'm gonna take the same gel liner and I'm just going to line my eyes one thin straight line. Hopefully I can do it from beginning to end with no shape or form. I promise you I have seen this like that. I've seen worse, but whatever. I, I don't think I ever did this. Maybe, maybe, maybe I did, but not, not as long as this one. For this eye, I went ahead and applied my Iconics from House of Lashes. It might be cheating, but to me, eyelashes do complete your look. They open up your eyes, but you don't necessarily need to apply false lashes all the time, of course. But at least invest some time in applying your mascara. Like, there's nothing worse than having a ton of makeup on your eyes, and then there's no lashes. It looks like your eyes are just... I don't know they're nowhere to be found like you can even see them so that's why for the purpose of this video I'm not even gonna bother applying lashes here like you just see a black and blue eye here and I you no know, lashes like it doesn't open up my eyes all it does it closes it more now I'm going to line my eyes using black line with my super dirty beauty blender just on the waterline so as you can see I lined from like here to the end, I try to leave the actual inner corners of the eyes without black liner. Like I love the cat eye look where you have it all the way from to the inner corner, but that does make your eyes look a lot smaller. Now with the same liner, I'm gonna go to this eye. I'm gonna go with this because I don't want to. Oh my God, look at my creases just from that setting. I'm going to line from inner corner. I'm not just gonna line my waterline. I'm actually gonna go waterline and lower with black. All right, so now I'm gonna go back into the face. I'm going to be setting this side of the face with a little bit, just the smallest amount of a light, very light setting powder. Not all foundations need to be set, but most or a lot of them do, so that's why I wanna show you this step. And also setting it will make your bronzer actually go in a lot smoother. Now I'm taking a bronzer and I'm taking just a little bit at a time in a little circular motion, so I'm applying that on, like right here, like right here. 
on this and I'm also going to drag it to my forehead a little bit and my jawline now for this side I'm going to just go straight in to the deepest shade right here and I'm also going to use a brush that is not really fluffy so it's going to pack on the color and it's not gonna look cute so I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like and look at that right there it looks super dirty it just looks muddy it's not blending for two reasons one we didn't set the foundation two actually three reasons two the brush that we're using is a not for powder it's not loose and um, three we just went in with a super dark shade for blush I'm applying a little bit just on the apples of my cheeks and then I'm gonna drag it back to give me that lifted effect for this side I'm gonna be taking a lighter pink which I have to be very careful for typically if I'm applying it to my skin because I'm a little dark uh, compared to the super light so I'm applying it heavily and I'm just going to concentrate it here on the front of the cheek so you can see that it actually makes my face fatter like it looks more rounded when I do it that way on this side we're actually looking very lifted on this side I'm looking like super droopy like sad I don't know it's not a cute look and then now just a highlighter what are we gonna do for the good side I'm going to be grabbing a powder highlight and I'm just going to go into this one and this one and with a not so big brush I'm just going to apply it very carefully into the places that I really want it so I really want to highlight like my the high points of my cheekbones right above my brow and a little bit on the nose so for the lips I'm going to line this side so you don't really really need to always align your lips but you typically have better control especially if you're using a darker lip um, on where you're gonna apply your lips and the fact that it was matte it made it easier as well for this side just for the purpose of the video so you can actually see a difference I'm gonna be using another lipstick and I'm just gonna go straight in and not line or anything and see what happens to finish off this side of the face I'm gonna be grabbing the same two highlighters that I used before with a bigger brush and we're not gonna be as precise so we're just gonna be applying it pretty much on the cheeks here and it's definitely just accentuating all my pores and on camera to be honest it doesn't look as bad so just make sure that when you're applying a highlighter highlighter is supposed to highlight it's supposed to bring attention so you only want to apply it in the areas that you really want to bring up and that's why I purposely just applied on this side right here just to give me a little bit of like a little bit of a lift if you just apply it everywhere I don't have any imperfections at the moment right here so I'm not accentuating anything bad but if I apply it here I have a ton of pores right here so it's just like you can see them all right there so definitely that's a no-no and uh, hopefully you guys can see that on the camera now so that is why I prefer to use a smaller brush to highlight than a bigger brush because that way you have a lot more precision as to why, where, not why, where you want your highlight. So I'm going to be using a setting spray and setting this side of the face. Basically what a setting spray does, aside from making your makeup last, it actually kind of like bundles in all your makeup together and makes it look a little bit more natural like everything kind of like meshes together and blends in and your skin looks a little bit more realistic like it doesn't look like a cake face as much all right and that is it this is the final result you guys i was super excited to film this video i hope that you guys enjoyed it if you enjoyed it, don't forget to thumbs up please and share on your social media which will help me a ton i really want to grow my channel our channel so that i can be here and reach more people if you guys know what I mean um, please let me know also if you learned anything new from today's video which I'm hoping I was able to help at least a few of you uh, with some tricks or things that we shouldn't do or do you know just let me know what you learned from this video which I would love 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 to at least help you in one little thing but yeah my loves uh, I think that it's it Thanks for watching, mil besos, and until next time, don't forget to subscribe, and uh, yeah.